Hi and welcome everybody again. We are now continuing from where we left off. Now we will talk about the OFDM system design. And this is very critical, very important, very crucial topic that we have to be able to comprehend it and digest it and understand it very well so that we can map the parameters of the system to the requirements of the applications and network and the scenario we are trying to serve. So the main parameters in OFDM that we need to be careful about while we are designing the OFDM system are the number of subcarriers you have in your system. Second, the guard time and symbol duration. Third, the subcarrier spacing. Third, the modulation type per subcarrier and type of forward error correction, ARQ whether you will use adaptive modulation or not, all these important parameters you need to be, you need to consider them and be careful about them while you are designing. Now, the requirements of OFDM system, the parameters we have just mentioned, they are influencing the, the, the characteristics of the system in terms of the available bandwidth, the FFT size, the big to average power ratio, required bitrate, the delay spread of the channel, the Doppler values, the mobility, the desired range, the maximum allowed to transmit power, the tolerable bit error rate, application, operating environment, and so on and so forth. All these are important factors that we need to consider. For example, FFT size and number of used subcarriers should be chosen by considering peak to average power ratio and total allocated bandwidth and desired data rate into account because increasing the number of subcarriers increases the peak to average power ratio, the bandwidth consumed and the data rate. So we want the goal here to match, to match the parameters of the OFDM with the requirements of the application or use case we have. Now, if we look at this picture together at this figure, we can see that we have here, we have here parameters for the OFDM. And there is parameters for the another waveform called filter bank multi-carrier. But let's focus only on the parameters of OFDM. And we have metrics, performance metrics that are being affected by the parameters you choose for the OFDM. This and this. These are metrics we care about. We usually try to improve in our design. Big to average power ratio, robustness to time dispersion, also frequency localization, robustness to frequency dispersion. So what CP rate, for example, CP rate, how frequent you are using and inserting CP affects the latency and affects the robustness to time dispersion and affects the spectral efficiency and affects the time localization. Filtering and windowing affects latency, spectral efficiency, time localization, robustness, and frequency localization. Subcarrier spacing affects robustness to frequency dispersion, affects latency, affects spectral efficiency. Number of subcarrier affects peak to average power ratio and also affects the complexity of the system. So as you can see, but the parameters have direct influence on the performances, performance of your system in terms of different metrics, whether latency, bit error rate, spectral efficiency, robustness to frequency dispersion, time dispersion, and the frequency localization. The goal here to understand these effects, these relationships between them, so that you can be able to design the systems properly. Now let's give an example, a design example. In, in general, in general, this is like 
very normal to see, it's preferable to have as small carrier spacing as possible. Why do you need to have small subcarrier spacing? Because this gives a long simple period and consequently the relative cyclic prefix overhead will be minimized. What do I mean by that? When you have, when you have large symbol duration this is symbol and this is large then the subcarrier spacing the subcarrier bandwidth is small when it's small when the subcarrier is bandwidth is small you can transmit more data per symbol more data obviously you can transmit more data per symbol you can transmit more data per, per symbol and therefore you can improve your data rate and improve your throughput. But where is the problem? When you increase the number of subcarriers, the big storage bar ratio increases. So you have two things contradicting with each other, big storage bar ratio and data rate. When you increase the symbol size, Data rate increases because the subcarrier spacing is shorter, you can put more subcarrier, but the big coverage bar ratio increases. You need to strike a balance between them. The other point, if you make the subcarrier spacing too short, too small, yes, becomes also very sensitive to Doppler and different kind of frequency inaccuracies of frequency offset, so on and so forth. Now, this is the, 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 this point should be taken into account while you are designing your system. The second point, while you are designing your system, if you make the subcarrier spacing large, what will happen to your symbol duration? It will shrink, it will become shorter. Now, when it becomes shorter, the there is a CB attached to the uh, CB attached to the symbol. This is the CB. Yes, the overhead of the CB will increase because the CB does not depend on the subcarrier spacing, does not depend on the symbol duration. It depends on the channel. So imagine you have a very very short symbol duration, and also the CB is short. Is, is relatively close to the duration of the symbol itself. So as if you are wasting half of your spectrum, half of your resources, not spectrum, time resources, wasting it for just the protection against multipath. So this is the problem when you have a small CB, a small symbol duration. But when you have large symbol duration, the overhead is small because this is the CB. The CB is fixed whether you are whether you are using large symbol duration or a small symbol duration. The CB is independent of the symbol duration. The CB depends on the channel. And therefore, the CB overhead when you have small symbol duration is more, which means you don't utilize your uh, system efficiently. But here, you kind of utilizing it efficiently. That's the second point you need to keep in mind while you are designing your system. The relationship between symbol duration and, uh, and subcarrier spacing from one side and the CB rate and the overhead and the number of subcarriers and the big torch bar ratio, sensitivity to, to doubler and data rate. Also, if we want to design a system in the frequency 2 GHz, for example, 2 GHz lambda is equal to 15 cm. With, with terminal mobility V equal 200 km per hertz, we get a maximum Doppler frequency equal to 370 hertz because Doppler is equal to V over lambda. V over lambda. If we require signal to interference ratio to be 30 this gives us a subcarrier spacing of approximately 221.2 this subcarrier spacing is less than the coherence bandwidth of the channel for most channel including macro cells micro cell and bico cell 
The corresponding go of dm symbol duration in this case, it, it will be 1 over delta f, which is this. This is a very simple example, and in a real design simulation, there are other factors which must be taken into account while you are designing systems. So the environment is affecting you, doubler, dispersion, CP, signal to interference ratio, all these parameters are important ones to be considered. This gives you the power, this formula gives you the power of ICI due to doubler, how much interference is causing to your system. So that when you calculate SIR, the, the SIR is given 30. SIR is 30. Now you can calculate, this is equal to the power of the signal over the interference. The interference you calculated from this equation due to doubler and power, once you know the SIR level required, you can calculate the power you need to transmit your signal with so that you get this SIR, which is really also very, very uh, intuitive thing you need to be aware of while you are designing your system. And the maximum time dispersion experience depend on the radio channel and its multipath uh, properties. Yes, the maximum time dispersion depends on the multipath and delay spread. If, for example, we target our system for ranges up to 5 km, an excess delay of reflected and diffracted signal corresponding to delta S equal 2 km is easily encountered. The difference between the two paths. So the excess delay is then delta S over C, the speed of light, which is equal to 6.7 microsecond. However, in rural area, excess delays of up to 20 microseconds can be observed. In this case, you will have, a typical, let's assume, a typical value of 20 microsecond. So you have, you, from this, you can calculate the number of tabs that you have in your channel and accordingly design your filter or equalizer. So start with some initial requirements. You ask the user, the customer, that you want to design the system for him about the required bit error rate. Let's say he said more than 20 megabit per second. The RNS delay spread in the channel you calculated. Let's say you found it 200 nanosecond. And the available bandwidth that you can transmit over it, let's say it's 15 megahertz. And you have Bico cell. Bico cell range is usually 100 meter. And you, cho you choose the guard time to be more than the delay spread. And the OFDM symbol duration as five times the guard time. So in this case, the, 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 the duration of the A50 is, kind, is equal to 3.2 microsecond. And the duration of the guard band is equal to 800 nanosecond. Now the subcarrier spacing you can calculate it by 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 just uh, reverse uh, by reciprocal of T FFT, which is equal to three hundred twelve point five kilohertz. If you have forty eight subcarrier in fifteen megahertz band, then you can you need sixty four point IFFT for modulation and demodulation. You can also calculate the doubler. The, 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 the power, the, the interference caused by doubler according to the required signal to noise ratio, signal to interference ratio, and then the allowed one. All these are parameters giving you a rough example of how to calculate things and how things are interco interconnected with each other. And each parameter is affecting many other metrics and you need to be careful while you are designing them according to the need of the customer and the available system parameters and the application you are trying to serve. Also the modulation, the coding rate, the data rate, uh, all these are can have direct influence into your data rate and your bit error rate and the other performance metrics like big to average power ratio and out of band emission.
And here we can have a look at the wireless LAN. This is a practical Wi-Fi system. How the, these parameters, the previous parameters I mentioned, most of them, they are related to YLAN, Wi-Fi system in which you have the symbol duration 3.2 microsecond the guard is uh, uh, the, the guard is 0.8 microsecond so the total duration is 4 microsecond and this is the physical parameters used to obtain different data rates for example if you the, you have different options for data rate 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, 54. And these data rates, you can obtain them by using different modulations with different coding rates. And, and also the number of subcarriers here. You you have you have FFT of sixty four. This means that you have twelve twelve subcarriers not used for data. These twelve subcarriers, where we use them, we use them for out of band emission. For example, these are the subcarrier of the OFDM, and here at the edge, at the edge of your OFDM, you don't use here. There are six carrier here and six carrier. You deactivate them in order to reduce the out-of-band emission and make it below the spectrum. The FFT size, the symbol duration is given, the guard interval, the subcarrier spacing is 1 over this value, 3.2, and it gives you the, the number subcarrier spacing equal 312, and the bandwidth you are allowed to use for your communication. The channel spacing and the frequency band and number of channels. All these are parameters used in the wireless LAN design to build your communication system. So coding across subchannels work best with with large delay spread. You have you can also use adaptive loading for improving your performance. What do I mean by adaptive loading? If you if your channel you have two subcarriers. And you have two sub channels. This sub channel is better than th this channel is better than this. Then in this case, what do you do? You you put on this sub carrier. You put high. You put higher order modulation like 16 equam or 64 equam. While for this you put 4 equam, uh, QBSK or PBSK. Okay, PBSK. So in that case. According to the response of the channel, you reduce or increase the modulation order so that you can decode successfully at the receiver. More bits per symbols where signal to noise ratio is sufficient. You can when the signal to noise ratio is high, which means that the channel is good, you increase the number of bits per symbol, and it also could also adopt transmit power in each subchannel. For example, if you have two these two you have these subchannels in your. Th these are the subchannels, and you have four subcarriers. You want to transmit them over the channel. So, since these two subcarriers are corresponding to good subchannels, you keep their power the same, but these subcarriers are corresponding to low low subchannel gain therefore you can increase their power a little bit to compensate for the defect in the channel you can also use reliable feedback channel and accurate channel information to estimate the channel and utilize it for a frequency equalization and coherent detection so these are very important points as well and here you have the OFDM modulator and demodulator, we already discussed it. And here we give a brief comparison between the TDM, CDM, OFDM in times of in, in terms of timing, timing synchronization, frequency synchronization, timing tracking, frequency tracking, channel equalization, analog front end. Analog front end uh, includes automatic gain control, power amplifier. V, uh, and VCO, voltage controlled oscillator, 
and also in terms of fade margin, region, reuse capacity, forward error correction, variable bit support, spectral efficiency. So if we need to go, or, or if we need to explain this table in details one by one, we, we would need a day or even more, especially because these parameters, they are affecting the performance directly. But the point here that I want to make is that OFDM OFDM waveform is chosen in many systems and many technologies like Li-Fi, Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, and the ADSL, VDSL, Optics due to their characteristics and features that are beating the other accessing schemes like TDMA and CDMA. In all the aspects, in most of the aspects, OFDM is better than them. That's why we, cho we, we chose it as the, the modulation scheme or the transmission method to be used in these technologies. Now, this is, this is now we are done with the OFDM conventional design, yes? The one that was used in 4G and the other systems. Now we need to have a look at the OFDM in the 5G networks. I mean, when we are in 5G, what are the differences here? What are the new things that we need to consider? People spent years studying modulation, trying to come up with new waveforms for 5G and so on and so forth. But at the end, what did they make? What did they produce? What changes they made? For on OFDM to make it suitable for 5G. So the point, let me summarize it for you here quickly, and we will go to the details. Now, now here we have the the researchers. They started in 2000 researching on 5G on 2010, around 2010. Yes, 2010. They started doing research, getting funding from the governments, from industry, this in Europe, in US, in China, UK, Japan, all these countries. Now, they, 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 all the, they know that in future networks, we have the Internet of Things devices, we have the massive machine type communication devices critical internet of thing ultra reliable internet of things so it's it's they came up with the conclusion that you have different requirements due to having different applications yes and they they then they when they checked the OFDM that was used with uh, LTE they found out that it cannot satisfy all these requirements yes because you have so many use cases for it, oh, 5G. So to, to, to solve this problem, researchers started thinking and it, trying to innovate and come up with the new waveforms that can meet the requirements of Internet of Things devices and the other applications as well. One time we summarized them until three use cases in enhanced mobile broadband where you have a high definition real time video streaming and real time gaming and th these applications that require high data extremely high data rate one of the application is cloud computing where you don't have you don't need to have a phone or pc you just everything on the cloud you just interact them with your eyes and f finger so now Enhanced mobile broadband, this is the point. And the second one is uh, massive machine type communication, which is related to Internet of Thing. And you have a thousand a million of devices connected with the base station and you have ultra reliable low latency. You need ultra reliable communication, very good bit error rate and low latency. As you can see, the requirements are different. And there is, they found out that there, you cannot find a single technology that can meet all these requirements, but they started studying different waveforms. So one of the waveforms they came up with is filter bank multi-carrier waveform, then filtered OFDM, and then UFMC, 
and then unique word OFDM and then zero tail DFT spread OFDM and GFDM windowed OFDM and many many other waveforms that have been proposed in order to solve some of these problems and to make sure that they can meet the requirements but uh, not, not be, most of them yes they, they, they introduce some advantages and merits but these advantages come at the expense of, of, of some drawbacks and uh, some uh, like drawbacks and impairments and disadvantages that we don't prefer and like to see in our systems. So after that, they found out after extensive design that OFDM is a waveform that can be made flexible enough to satisfy most of these use cases. Yes, after maybe 10 years of research, we, they came up to the conclusion that you can modify OFDM instead of trying to invent a new ones here. We can modify the OFDM in such a way that it can it can handle these services, these new services. Why they preferred OFDM? Because OFDM is already being used in the 4G network, used in the mobile smartphones. And we don't need to rebuild the network from scratch. We can build on top of it just change these things using software or some simple hardware and continue upgrading the 4G network to the 5G network. So that was the mentality and they, in 2018-2019, they adopted OFDM as the waveform for 5G. Now OFDM, not the conventional OFDM, what they adopted is OFDM with different numerologies, a new term called numerology entered to the, uh, to the table, to the research domain, research area. And what do we mean by this numerology? Now we will explain this so that you can understand it better. So here, here the, the numerology, think of it as the subcarrier spacing of in OFDM. The subcarrier spacing in OFDM. In LTE, LTE was using this. Delta F is equal to 15 kilohertz. Only this. This is LTE. This call, this row is LTE. One use case, we need to increase the data rate as much as we can. Improve the improve the experience of the user in terms of internet speed and they were using this but now in 4G in 5G they introduced OFDM uh, waveforms with different subcarrier spacing so you have subcarrier spacing of 15 subcarrier spacing of 30 kilohertz of 60 120 240 now based on what I can choose these based on the requirements of the user. So for example, one resource block here, when you have a 12 subcarrier, 12 subcarrier multiplied by 15 equal 180 kilohertz. In the case of numerology, we call this numerology number one. This numerology number two, when you multiply 30 multiplied by 12, you get 360 kilohertz. And numerology number three, 60 multiplied by 12, 720. The more, the the, the more you increase the subcarrier spacing, the more bandwidth you will use. And this, this subcarrier spacing has direct influence on the symbol duration. Yes? Let's see how it affects the symbol duration. The symbol duration is something like this. When you have, when you have subcarrier, When you have a small subcarrier spacing, the symbol duration will become large and wide. When you increase the subcarrier spacing, the symbol will shrink lower. So this 
Numerology number one can correspond to this. Numerology number two corresponds to this. Why? Because you have larger subcarrier spacing, smaller symbol. Larger, even larger, smaller. La larger, smaller. Larger, smaller. What, what, what other changes you see here? Not only the duration, but also the power. The power. Why do we have this power? Now think with me. All of us, let's focus on this example. You have... You have the subcarrier. Let's take two examples. Subcarrier, small subcarrier, and short, uh, wide subcarrier. Now, what's the difference between small subcarrier, narrow subcarrier, and wide subcarrier? Narrow subcarrier, you have in 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 the time in the frequency domain, you have. Uh, smaller bandwidth and and since we assume that the amount of energy under the carrier is the same for narrow and wide then this carrier will have a higher amplitude higher power kind of and and this will have wider bandwidth and lower amplitude because the energy under the curve is the same now, what will happen to the symbol? When you have uh, narrow subcarrier, the symbol will be large. Yes. And when you have wide subcarrier, the symbol would be small. So now we have the opposite. We have short symbol duration for, for the wide subcarrier. This is wide subcarrier. This is narrow subcarrier. And we have large symbol duration for the narrow subcarrier. Now you can think and say if the subcarrier affects the symbol duration, then this can fit and be useful for the low latency applications. Yes, because your symbol duration is small now, it's very small. So you can make this case for the, the services that require low latency because you can quickly send the symbol. It's, the duration is shorter. What are these applications? For example, if you are using remote surgery, if you are trying to do remote surgery operation or controlling the drones or uh, industrial automation or any of these critical services that require low delay, or especially for uh, vehicle to vehicle communication or uh, self driving cars any any delay can cause an accident so it's better to reduce the delay as much as you can so to reduce the delay you need to increase the subcarrier spacing the subcarrier bandwidth and this will reduce the data rate a little bit and reduce the peak to average power ratio and increase the cp overhead but this is how you can serve that use case, low latency. However, if you have a user that requires really very, very high data rate, then you need to, to send many narrow subcarriers. And these, since they are narrow, you, 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 will, you will have large symbol duration, which means you will experience some delay. So this is good for, let's say, this is video streaming. And this is for self-driving cars. And here is the catch. When you increase the subcarrier spacing, the amplitude here decreases, but the amplitude in the time domain increases because it's energy, it's about energy. The energy in the frequency domain is the same as the energy in time domain. Parseval theorem, you confine, you, 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 you don't lose the energy, it's the same. So if, 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 if the amplitude is here very high and you squeeze it in one domain, in the other domain it will spread and the amplitude will reduce. If you reduce the amplitude in frequency domain, the amplitude in time domain will increase to compensate for the power and have the same energy. So now, 
you will ask me what if there are two users in the network and one asking this service and the other asking this service and you need to put these two users schedule them adjacent to each other and serve them simultaneously what will happen here is the trick so here is the case we are talking about here you have user one user two this user using white subcarrier this white subcarrier while this is using narrow subcarrier because this white subcarrier because it it's using self-driving car for example you reduce the latency you need to reduce the latency and this user is narrow subcarrier now now based on this fact based on this fact you tell me which user his subcarriers have larger power this one the narrow the power of the narrow is larger than the power of this why because the the bandwidth here is smaller since you the amount of energy inside under the curve is the same then the more you shrink it the more it will go up so when you put them next to each other they will look like this this is for user one and this is sorry this is for user one and this is for user two so the amount of energy here it's the same for both but for the second user to have the same amount of energy you need to increase the power this is math this is physics therefore you will have power offset between the two users in the frequency domain now look what will happen in the time domain in the time domain this will have shorter symbol in the time domain shorter symbol duration and here larger symbol duration so what will happen here here this shorter symbol duration will have larger power so you will have this in time domain in time domain you will have something like this now this narrow subcarrier corresponds to wide symbol duration with lower amplitude to reduce the amount of power and have the same energy and this now reduce increases the amplitude of the symbol and reduces the period and this causes also power offset in the time domain as well and this power offset can affect the inter can affect the interference between them and the orthogonality as well so now also you keep this in mind while keep this in mind while you are understanding this system and trying to design this is very critically important point you don't need to forget it the relationship between time and the frequency power and time the relationship between time and the frequency power and frequency and time how they are affecting each other when you increase the subcarrier spacing and reduce the subcarrier spacing this is one point the other point now when you increase when you reduce the subcarrier spacing for a, for a user who wants high data rate or high speed internet you need to use many many subcarriers like hundreds thousands this many subcarriers well since you are using so many subcarriers you will increase the peak to average power ratio in this so this will have high peak to average power ratio for the other user who's not using uh, too many subcarriers only few subcarriers in order to reduce uh, because the application is, is just using low number does not require uh, too much data it's just controlling the information you need to control the car remotely or you are controlling a machine or something and you increase the symbol duration in this case the symbol duration will be very short as I, so, I show you here very short and since it's very short the cb the cb can be as as long as large as the symbol itself so the overhead will become very very large so you reduce the spectral efficiency kind of so this is also another point you need to keep in mind the peak to average power ratio when you use too many subcarrier and the 
and what here the CP overhead when you reduce the CP duration of the symbol this is symbol uh, and it's related to the data but the CP is not related to the data the CP is related to the channel the channel let's say the channel says use four microsecond you use four microseconds so the overhead is large and the same this is for the for the downlink you have you, you put these signals together and you get a composite signal so these the ones i draw here they they look like one signal so in time domain they are on top of each other here one signal goes to all users and each user get his own signal in the uplink however also the two users send their signals and they reach the receiver as a composite signal then now you tell me they they reach the receiver on top of each other i tell you yes but you can separate them in the frequency domain because they are multiplexed in the frequency domain. So this is very important and critical point while you are trying to understand the differences between the OFDM used in LTE and the OFDM used in 5G. Now, what about when you put the when you when the when the base station sends the signal to two users simultaneously but these two users are asking two different services and therefore you need to use two different numerologies one is using let's say this example one is using 30 kilohertz while the other is using 60 kilohertz this for low latency and this for high data rate uh, application what will happen in this case not of sideband in this case as you can see here this wide wide subcarrier will cause interference to the subcarrier that has lower subcarrier spacing and this is the interference value when you draw it so you will create inter intercarrier interference between them and since it's coming due to changing the subcarrier spacing we call this interference a new type of interference we call it INI inter-numerology interference so this is one of the challenges when you are in, in 5G and you need to be aware of so that you can hopefully come up with techniques that can overcome this now one of the techniques one of the techniques to overcome this is to put guard bands between these two numerologies you you separate them away from each other and you put guard bands so that you reduce the interference but the guard band is costly why it's costly because you buy it from the government and you pay lots of money for it okay it's very costly and very inefficient to keep using it so therefore therefore we need to come up with different better solution that can minimize the guard band while reducing the interference between the numerology now this is the, this shape in the frequency domain in time domain they look like this you have one signal here and this signal is composed of this of the narrow side narrow subcarrier Numerology and wide subcarrier numerology. The wide subcarrier numerology, since the subcarrier is wide, see this, this wide subcarrier here is corresponding to this. Wide subcarrier corresponds to shorter symbol duration, and this is the CB, of course. While for this smaller subcarrier, the symbol duration is larger, and the CB is this then you you in time domain they add up on top of each other but they are separating the frequency the OFDM signal looks like this you send it you send it at the receiver for user one for the for wide subcarrier numerology the FFT size is half of the original FFT size for the first sub for the other numerology so so this means that you need also to change the receiver design as well the fft size cannot be fixed all the times and the same you need to yeah yeah of course there is no orthogonality here when you bought when you bought the subcarriers uh, with different numerologies adjacent to each other there is no orthogonality 
But there is no other way to solve it except you come up with a new better algorithm to reduce this orthogonality. This orthogonality, you basically, you basically put guard bands. What I mean by guard bands, here you you introduce here some guard bands. So you shift this there and you shift this here and you put guard bands so that the amount of interference coming at this symbol is lower. So this is the the important aspect. This, of course, here here where the research is going on in the literature, researchers are trying to re how can you multiplex two different numerologies with two subcarrier spacing while reducing the amount of interference and maintain their orthogonality, which is really not up until now it's not very clear. So one of the suggested solution to solve this problem is to be the guard band, you redesign it in such a way that it's aware of this interference and make use of it, or you use uh, modulation schemes that do, do not require activating all the subcarriers simultaneously, or you come up with a technique that can Calculate the amount of interference at each subcarrier. You can calculate it. Yes, you calculate it. Let's say you calculate the interference on this subcarrier. As you can see, the interference is coming on the odd, on the even subcarrier. The odd they don't have. This subcarrier, no interference, but the interference is coming only on this. And then this does not have. Then it comes on the fourth one. So one subcarrier with interference and one without. Now you can come up with a solution like this. You can say, I can calculate the amount of interference here affecting the subcarrier and the amount of interference here affecting the subcarriers. Let's say I found it to be some value, R, R or whatever. Let's say you found the amount of interference here, you call it R1 and the amount of interference here, you call it R2. And you try to design a signal that can be added to the to the data signal in such a way that when it gets added, it can cancel the interference here, subtract it totally. This can be one of the solution, but how efficient it is and how how practical. This solution might be we need to investigate that and simulate and test and of course you need to have some strong math in order to be able to deal with these transforms so these are the numerology and supported channels in 5g and the OFDM symbol duration and the sampling time for symbol time and CP time so the parameters here, as you can see here, you have here the different numerologies. All of them with different subcarrier spacing, the CB type, and whether it support the physical downlink share channel, physical uplink. These are names for the channel that you are using to send your data. So these numerologies can be used, the others cannot. These channels for synchronization, primary synchronization, secondary synchronization, and these for random access channel. So all these are important parameters to consider while you are designing your system. And the frame structure in 5G is different than LTE. This is this frame structure. LTE, as you can see, LTE is part of the 5G. Part is one LTE system is only one case of 5G. 5G is adaptive, uh, adaptive system, flexible, can be changed according to the requirements. And here you can see one radio frame is equal to 10 subframes, 10 slots, which is equal to 10 milliseconds. Each subframe is equal to one slot, one millisecond. And in each one slot, you have 14 symbols. So this is for the case of 15, sub, 15 kilohertz. Now for the for the case where you have 30 kilohertz, the one subframe is equal to two slots and equal one millisecond, and one slot is equal to 14 symbols. 
So as you can say, you can, the frame structure changes according to the changes in the subcarrier spacing because it affects the number of slots you have and it affects the total number of OFDM symbols you have in one frame. The waveform in, in, in 5G, the waveform in downlink, they consider it to be CBOFDM, which is similar to, to LTE, but with different subcarrier spacing. In the uplink, they consider either you use DFT spread OFDM or CBOFDM. The DFT spread, the only difference here, you are using a trans, a, here kind of another transform in order to improve the peak to average bar ratio, reduce it. So this becomes single carrier. But now this is the difference from LTE. In the uplink, in the LTE, we only use this. But in 5G, we can use also this in the uplink, but try to reduce the, the peak to average bar ratio. Now, one might ask, why should we keep, why why should we use CBOFDM in the uplink where the big storage power ratio of OFDM is higher than the DFT spread OFDM? I tell you because in the future the mobile devices will have MIMO. MIMO. And CBOFDM is compatible with MIMO and user friendly with MIMO, while DFT spread OFDM is very difficult to integrate it with MIMO. Because in my more required that each subcarrier have uh, each subcarrier experiences a uh, flat channel, and that's very important point to consider. That's why they consider CBO of the in the uplink as well. And we can, th th these are the important uh, information rough. This is very brief summary about the exact key differences between the physical layer in 4G and 5G and the changes to the frame structure, to the waveform in uplink, downlink, and the new numerologies they are using, and how it's affecting the whole system and how changing the, just the subcarrier spacing can affect the power offset, can affect the symbol duration, can affect the overhead, the big touch bar, all these parameters, and therefore make them adaptable based on the adjustable according to the application you are targeting to serve. So for this, we can stop here for today, and we can continue next lecture, inshallah. Thank you very much, and 